It takes being good at a lot of things to build great software. We have to understand the problem we're trying to solve very well. We need to gather feedback quickly and effectively on our changes so that we can explore the problem. And crucially, we have to be able to divide the problem up into small parts so that we can tackle those parts more independently from one another. That is fundamentally what software design is all about. How to organise our code and so how to organise our thinking so that we can deal with the complexity of the problems that we're trying to address with our software. Design is the real skill of software development. Things like language syntax and tool use are simple in comparison, yet we don't really seem to spend all that much time talking about design. What makes good design? What bad? What are the guiding principles of design that lead us toward better outcomes? I think that probably the most successful, most durable model for this kind of guidance in software is Bob Martin's Clean Code. So that's our topic for today. And specifically, I want to talk about an idea that is at the heart of Clean Code that usually sparks some debate. Hi, and welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel. I'm Dave Farley, and if you're new here, please do subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, hit like as well. Clean code has shaped modern programming for over a decade. It's had an enormous influence. It's helped a whole generation of developers think more carefully about naming, duplication, clarity, and discipline in their code. I have to confess that it has never been a model that directly influenced how I thought about design very much. Not because I think it's wrong or disagree with any of the advice. It's probably more to do with timing. I'd already largely established my thoughts and habits and my approach to design before Clean Code, the book, was released. And while I didn't really disagree with the ideas, they didn't really seem to add much to what I was already doing. And this is what I want to explore today. How does Clean Code relate to what I describe in my book, Modern Software Engineering? as a rational model for managing complexity. Are these ideas the same? Are they complementary or are they contradictory? Software development is about fundamentally managing the com this complexity. If we get that wrong, everything else is just noise. In modern software engineering, I argue that we should be more like scientists and engineers. Measure, test, iterate, refine, so that we can explore problems in more controlled ways and learn faster and more effectively. For that, we need to use design in ways that help us reduce uncertainty, increase feedback, and importantly, compartmentalize the problems that we're working on. So does clean code help us with those things? And where, if anywhere, does it fall short? I'd like to pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfig, and Octopus Deploy. Octopus makes it easy to de deliver software to Kubernetes, multi cloud, on prem infrastructure, and anywhere else. They automate release, deployment, and operations of your software and AI workloads with a tool that can handle continuous delivery at scale. All of these companies, though, offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics and philosophy of software development that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, do click on the links in the description below to check them out. Clean Code's core message is really that code should be easy to read and understand because code is read much more often than it's written. This aligns very well with my take, which is that the quality of software is determined by the ease with which we can change it. One important aspect of that is readability. High-performing teams, according to Dora and others, reduce cognitive load through readable, straightforward code, which is easier to change, that is easier to modify safely and quickly. Clean code promotes clear naming, and certainly this reduces cognitive load too. Naming is about compressing meaning. It reduces the mental overhead of understanding a system, which is exactly what engineering aims to do too. Clean code encourages us to write code in small functions. These encourage fast feedback and improve testability of, in our systems by increasing the surface area of the code. More of that later which gives us more places at which we can test that code. 
This means that the clean code ideal of short cohesive functions supports the engineering goals of increasing our rate of learning very strongly. Smaller things are easier to change and test. Clean code highlights the importance of preferring simple constructs over clever ones. Again, no disagreement from me. Simplicity leads to fewer bugs. Fewer bugs leads to faster iteration and faster iteration leads to more learning, which is what we're really looking for. In short, clean code provides a set of practices that broadly reduce complexity and increase the speed and quality of our feedback loops. That's good engineering, and I couldn't agree more with those goals. One of the bigger critiques of clean code is not really about what's in the book, it's how the ideas get applied in practice. Semantic diffusion strikes yet again. There's a tendency for some people to treat clean code as some kind of arbitrary style guide rather than as an engineering discipline, rules rather than guide rails. It seems to me in general that developers sometimes seem to be looking for something more like a recipe or algorithm for success, which is really rather odd. This is impossible in a discipline as complex as ours, and if it were possible, we could write a simple program to do it instead of us. For example, some clean code zealots choose small functions for the sake of small functions. I've literally seen some developers arbitrarily divide a function in two, literally splitting it in half as if that improved anything. The objective here is small, meaningful functions. So how many lines of code are a useful guide perhaps, but the meaningful part matters. This is more about finding consistent levels of abstraction in a function than anything else. Our goal should be small, coherent functions that mean something in their own right. Another common criticism is that such zealots often obsess over subjective aesthetics and reformat the code endlessly, creating layers of abstraction that don't do anything to increase clarity. They pursue purity in the Uncle Bob sense without considering empirical trade-offs. And that leads to a key difference. In modern software engineering, I argue that the job is not to follow the rules, the job is to optimise for fast, safe learning. It's the engineering lens. This is not about clean or unclean. It's about does this make us faster at discovering what we need to build and does it help us to achieve a better result? If whatever we do doesn't end up with us building better software faster, it doesn't count as engineering. Core principles from modern software engineering that clarify the complexity conversation are that complexity is measured by impact, not appearance. A function with 100 lines might be simpler than five layers of indirection. It's usually not, but it might be. Code's cleanliness must be tied to real-world feedback. If it makes tests harder or deploys slower or delays integration, it's not clean in any useful or meaningful sense. Engineering guides behaviour empirically. We don't guess, we measure outcomes, cycle time, defect rate, deployment frequency, recovery speed, comprehension time perhaps. In that sense, modern software engineering provides something clean code doesn't attempt. A theoretical and empirical framework, clean code gives advice. Modern software engineering gives reasons why that advice is good advice. Clean code emphasises abstraction as a tool for clarity. Modern software engineering emphasises experimentation as a tool for clarity and abstraction as a tool for managing complexity. Clean code says write functions that read like prose. Modern software engineering says build feedback loops so small that the complexity is forced into the open. Clean code focuses on how to structure code. Modern software engineering focuses on how to structure work. And if you structure the work right, small steps, automation, fast feedback, continuous integration, you naturally produce clearer, simpler software. You probably end up with cleaner code. This is because you can't hide complexity in a system that you are changing every few minutes. This is the crucial inversion. Good engineering produces good code, not the other way around necessarily. I'd like to be absolutely clear about this. None of this is meant as a criticism of clean code. I think that the advice in the book and presentations around this topic are very good. If you view clean code from an engineering mindset, its advice is very good indeed, but only when the practices serve the goals of reducing cognitive load, improving testability, increasing feedback, and reducing the cost of change. 
Clean code becomes engineering when it's tied to measurable outcomes like these. Otherwise, the risk is that it's seen only as a aesthetics. And here, I think the critics are making a big mistake. One of the commonest pushbacks on clean code is that it makes code more difficult to read because it's more difficult to see the whole thing. I think that this is a mistake on several fronts. First, by decomposing code into smaller chunks, particularly when you do this via test-driven development, you're not making the code more complex. You're exposing the inherent complexity in the problem that you're solving. My friend Michael Feathers once told me that when you do this, you expose the real surface area of the problem, which is a really nice phrase that has informed how I've thought about this ever since. If we don't approach our work this way, we may end up with fewer obvious parts to the system, but this is not necessarily a good thing if those parts are more complex and hiding even deeper complexity. And now change is more difficult and more, more error prone and intent is more obscure. I don't really sympathize with people who say that they find modular code harder to understand. This is how humans deal with complexity in almost every other field that we can think of. We decompose problems into smaller, more compartmentalized, more tractable pieces. This is true in maths, science, engineering. It's true if you're drawing a picture or writing a book too. Of course, you also need to maintain some higher level view of how the individual pieces work together. And this is important and sometimes done very badly, so perhaps I can sympathize after all. But discarding modularity and abstraction because you can't understand how the pieces work together seems like a very poor deal to me. Because it's inherent to both modularity and abstraction that with less of these things, the number of interactions and dependencies between those parts will be greater, more complex and less clear, not less complex and clearer. This is about a lot more than aesthetics. And while aesthetics are not engineering, good engineering has its own form of elegance and beauty. This stuff is important for deeper reasons than some arbitrary criteria for beauty in code. This is two sets of practical, pragmatic advice. So ultimately, how do the two perspectives compare? Clean code provides useful heuristics for writing readable, maintainable software. Modern software engineering describes a framework for understanding why these heuristics matter and sometimes why they don't. Clean code is craft. Modern software engineering is engineering. When they work together, you get something very powerful. Neither detracts from the other, in my view. Both promote simple designs, small steps, automated tests, rapid feedback, continuous integration. And when we have all of those things, we get software that is easier and safer to evolve. And that is the whole point and the real value that underpins both of these sets of ideas. Great software is easy to change. I think that Bob Martin's and my work complement one another significantly. Inevitably, I prefer my perspective and my description of things. And I'm pretty sure that Bob prefers his but I don't see them as being in competition at all. You gain more if you understand both. Thank you very much for watching to the end. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Modern Software Engineering channel, do consider supporting us by joining our Patreon community. And for all of the Patreon members, I'd like to thank you as ever for your ongoing support and look forward to seeing you next in one of our online meetings. Thanks and bye-bye.